Hello. Good morning. Come on in. How are you? Don't ask me how I am. Uh, but this project. So I'm I'm towards the tail end of it. We're getting there. But to get here, uh, I did crack. Has been the struggle bus. I had one goal for this video. Come out the other side with a working pedal. And I would say guitar pedal, but I guess anything that pushes sound through a cable can technically go through this pedal. So it's not necessarily a guitar pedal, it's the instrument pedal of mysterious music box. This is the completed pedal right here. The Fun Box 3, it is a guitar pedal that you can flash different effects to in the form of firmware. My goal with these project videos is to show you something cool, challenge myself, inspire other people to try and take a crack at what I took, uh, I did crack. This is something that you've ever considered, but you thought that it was like out of the realm of your possibility. I am here to tell you it is. <laughs> Just kidding. It's not. It's not if you follow all the directions and nothing goes wrong. If you have to troubleshoot at the PCB level, we're both 11 months ago was when I first kicked this off and I hit every single snag possible. And I think the fact that it has been 11 months tells you that I got in over my head. But you know what they say about the frog that falls in the bucket of cream? He, uh, he watches his brother die and then he's like, Sweet, I'm not dead. <laughs> I love documentation. I love creating documentation. And so whenever I do projects like this, I whip up a huge project guide that makes this project 10 times easier for you than it was for me. Because I already went through all the pain of all the learning and all the searching. But this has been awesome. And I want more people to experience this. Quick disclaimer, this video is sponsored by PCBWay. They're the ones who provided the PCBs that are on the inside of this guitar pedal. More on that a little bit later. Let's talk about the project first. Hey, really quick, before you go, can you do me a favor? Tell your mom hi for me? <laughs> Just kidding. If you're new to this channel, you might have not really known that I'm into 3D printing. If you've been around for a while, you might know that I'm into 3D printing. This take sucks. You're gonna have a great time here, okay? So the beauty of this project is that all of the hard work, all of the big brain thinking has already been done for us. We don't need to do any electrical engineering, any measurements of electricity. The software is already written and we have Keith to thank for all of that. All we have to do is find the parts, buy the parts, assemble it when it gets here, do a little bit of command line terminal magic to flash that software to the pedal and you're done. You don't need to be a computer scientist in order to complete this project, you do need to be a little bit savvy because there is some command line terminal work that you need to do. So if you've never worked in the terminal ever, again, if you follow all the steps, step by step, you can do it. If you're somebody who's terrified of the command line, let me put you at ease. The free versions of ChatGPT, Claude, T3 Chat, I don't think T3 is a free mode, they might. You can get by by using those to assist you, to help you learn what errors mean and what different keywords mean. And if you're trying to do something and you're not getting the right response, they are fantastic teammates to have for projects like this. A pedal like this has three core pieces, the PCB, the microcontroller, and then the software that goes on that microcontroller. The PCB acts as a map with a bunch of roads that connect all of these different parts together. The microcontroller also gets connected to the PCB and can communicate with all of the other parts that are connected. The software, which in this case is the effects that we want to put on the pedal, that is stored on the microcontroller. So then once that microcontroller is connected and the pedal is on, 
it dictates how these parts communicate with one another and that's how you get the sound of whatever effect you put on it. If you wanna see the extent of the effects and what each pedal and each effect can do, he has a YouTube channel where he has documented this project a lot, covers all the different effects, what they can do, uses them with MIDI controllers and with guitars, so check that out. In the project guide, you're gonna find the first page of the guide is just a complete list of all of the parts that you need to build one pedal. I use Notion to create all my documentation. A, I love Notion and it's easy for me, but also because their databases are super awesome, they're dynamic, and you, the viewer, can choose how to view the database. You can click the filters at the top of the database and it's gonna switch you to a thumbnail view and it'll just give you the parts that are available from that vendor and then you can see screenshots. Uh, and then if you want, you can click on the item, it'll open up a sidebar page and you get a little bit more info on it. The bulk of your parts are gonna come from Tata, DigiKey, and Love my switches and then of course the PCB will come from PCB way and that sounds like a perfect time to segue into our sponsor I'm being paid. PCB Way is who provided the PCBs for this project. If you have ever wanted to bring a project to life, whether it is through uh, PCB design, manufacturing, CNC, 3D printing, you can use them for small one-off projects. You can scale it up and do some production level stuff. And in this case, if you have a schematic or design of a PCB, you can upload it without needing the electrical engineering degree get the PCBs made, get them shipped to you quickly, and then you're on your way. Links for this project are hosted on PCB Way, which makes it super easy to just click on the project, fill out the order, and go. So I wanna thank them for not only sponsoring this video, but also waiting months. And I had delay after delay after delay after delay. My contacts at PCB Way were so patient, so understanding, did not push me at all. Original deadline was probably sometime in August. And as a creator who just went full time and stress is at an all time high, they added no stress whatsoever. So I'm thankful for that. Starting the order for the PCB is super easy. So if you go to pcbway.com slash project, and then you search for Funbox and hit enter. Here's Keith's project here. Click on that. He's got a bunch of links um, to different YouTube videos, his build guide, his GitHub repo. You wanna select the only PCB, hit add to cart. Once you get to this page, I know this looks like a lot. You don't need to do anything but one thing. Leave everything default. If you wanna change the color of the PCB, you can. I changed mine to white. In one of Keith's updates, he said that he recommends changing the surface finish to immersion gold as that helps with, it was either feedback or electrical interference. Now you can see that does change the price from the $27 to the $66. He said it's worth it. I'm gonna trust the smarter person because I, 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 I don't trust myself. I would have done the cheap one. And then you hit save to cart, go through the checkout process. And then once that design is submitted, uh, an engineer on PCB Wayside approves the project and then it gets sent off and they ship crazy fast. And then you can go ahead and order the rest of your parts. Originally when I built my first pedal, I had planned on doing a step-by-step -step guide for the soldering part. However, once I soldered my first board and I saw that it took me like four hours to finish, I realized it would make this video way too long. So I'm gonna do like a brief overview of what needs to happen just to give you like the goods uh, to help you with the assembly of the board, give you a couple tips and tricks, but all of the details, the nitty gritty is gonna be in the build guide. When it comes to the order of the parts that you're soldering, there's a bunch of different categories of parts. PCB, switches, LEDs, chips, diodes, controllers, jacks, knobs, capacitors, resistors, dip sockets. It can be extremely overwhelming. The hardest part for me as somebody who is not an electrical engineer and only has a little bit of microcontroller and soldering experience uh, is identifying which were capacitors, which were resistors, which capacitors were which, how the value that was on the capacitor tied to the value that was on the product page. It was extremely confusing. So one thing I did to help you on your journey is if you look in the project guide, you're gonna see part of pictures of Keith's board up against pictures of the schematics that he provided. And then you're gonna see high resolution pictures of my boards 
with all of the parts soldered so that if you need a, a picture that you can really zoom into to see what parts are or see any labels and get an idea of where things are supposed to go, um, those pictures will be there for you. I think no matter what order you go in, with a few exceptions, it's going to be a tight fit. And it's, at some point, it's going to get difficult to try and put this thing together. So here's some loose guidelines. It'll be the least difficult if you break your assembly and soldering into three different phases. Phase one, resistors, capacitors, diodes, dip switches, and SIP sockets and jacks. Phase two, wires for the switches, wires for the foot switches, wires for the quarter inch jack, and wires for power. And then phase three, foot switches, switches and LEDs. I think that's right. All right, home stretch, baby. We're almost there. So this guitar pedal is open source. And if you're unfamiliar with that term, it basically means that the firmware that is flashed to the pedal, uh, which is made up of a bunch of lines of code, is open to anyone ballsy enough to tinker with it. Uh, the, the makers of the microcontroller, the DAISY, published the code so that anybody uh, or anyone could write their own code and flash it to the microcontroller. And this gives said person the ability to change and customize the code to their liking, which means you can flash any firmware or in this case, effect to the pedal. Now, Keith has already written all of the code for us. So all we need to do is get it onto the microcontroller in the pedal. Each of the effects that he has created all have a different name of a planet in the solar system. And again, because this is a process that can take a while to set up and complete, I'm not gonna cover every step of this in this video, but both in the project guide and the video description, there's gonna be a link to another video that is a comprehensive step-by-step -step tutorial on how to flash this board. Uh, this is another part of the project where, because Keith is so far ahead in his knowledge and expertise, I had a hard time following his simplified guide on getting this done. Uh, so I typed up just a little bit of stuff, just a little bit of stuff, small amount. This all sounds really technical, uh, but it's pretty base level stuff. So if you're somewhat good with computers and you have been in the command line before, you'll be fine. And when it's all said and done, you are left with one beautiful pedal. I mean, two beautiful pedals. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, listen, I am not a guitar pedal reviewer, man. I can't show you every effect and what these pedals are capable of. I can just give you little tidbits here and there but I'll at least show you how Keith designed this to work. I chose not to get any of the UV printing on the enclosures themselves. I was kind of planning to do a little bit of 3D printing fun, but I also kind of just love the clean look of it. I love how it looks with no text, no print. It is a stereo pedal. I've pretty much been only working with this in mono right now. The only other stereo pedal I have is the Chroma Console. Now there is one issue that I'm still working through, and that is noise. Can you hear that? There is a one kilohertz whine that is more noticeable with certain effects than it is others. I've done a little bit of reading and it seems like there are some changes that you can make to help get rid of that. One of them was actually soldering a, a piece in between two parts, kind of acting as like a ground noise loop isolator. So far that has been the only downside of this project is trying to figure out if that is solvable. But I did want to mention that. 3D printed guitar stand. How cool is that? That saved me some money. This one. Come here. Each pedal has its own diagram and you can, I think, wait. Yeah, this one goes over here. So with these infographics, you can tell what knob and switch does what. So of course you have your foot switches for engaging and disengaging. And for the Mercury pedal, for example, this is the uh, NAM modeler. Oh, I guess it's not NAM modeler. It's just a NAM, oh. All right, so up top you have your gain, level, and presence. And then down below is your three band EQ, so lows, medium, highs. And then these switches that are here, choose your amp or your cab. And then it looks like the third switch on this particular pedal doesn't do anything. But over on the earth pedal, it does do something. So the earth is a reverb pedal that has an octave selector on it as well. So the knobs are pre-delay, mix and decay, and then mod, mod rate, and filter. What I love about this earth pedal is it has a freeze mode so you can play like, you, you know, you can strum and then freeze that sound and it'll hold that sound as long as this pedal is pushed down. See how the light comes on as long 
long as you're holding it. Love that. And then this middle switch is actually, I'm sorry, this middle switch is the octave. So you can see just between these two pedals, how much difference there is and how much control you get over a bunch of different parts of the effect. And then something I'm not really touching on this video too much is the dip switches on the side that add additional functionality. So those dip switches allow you to make additional changes to how the pedal works. Something cool you could do is if you wanted to match the color of the knobs that you choose to the effect pedal and match it up to his infographics to help you keep what is what, that'd be dope. So far in this video, I've shown you two out of all of the effects that are available. Earth, which is an octave delay, and then the Mercury, which is a NAM neural amp modeler. Now, as a new guitar player and a musician with zero music theory knowledge, uh, these are the only two effects I'm comfortable demonstrating and being that vulnerable. Um, but here are all the other options for effects. Venus, a spectral reverb. Uranus, a granular delay and synth. Saturn, spectral delay, Pluto, dual stereo speed looper with real-time effects, Neptune, an ethereal reverb delay, Mars, amp distortion modeler and delay, and that's the end of the list. But my vocal inflection probably had you thinking otherwise. I've spent the last couple weeks just kind of noodling around, learning how to work the pedals, just having a good time. Uh, sometimes I'll just sit on the floor playing around, having fun, and then all of a sudden, it's been 45 minutes and I can't feel my legs because I'm 35 and I'm sitting crisscross applesauce. What a mistake, but worth it. So thank you very much for watching today. I hope I've given you the, the courage and the resources to go out and give something like this a shot or maybe give another guitar pedal a shot. Take care of yourself. Good night.